I became an attorney to help people with law and justice on your side. After seeing evil things happen to good people, I did want more. I studied world religion at Harvard in order to spread the spirit of love, help the whole world. We all deserve food, protection, and a happy life. Welcome to the Mia Westbrook Show. Welcome to the show, friends. Thanks for joining us. We have a great show for you today. My guest is a legend in the music industry. He has also been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, not one time, but twice. I'm so honored to have him as a guest. Welcome to the show, Yank Berry. Hey, Mia. How are you doing? It's great to have you on. Tell us what inspired you. What did you see many years ago in order to found Global Village Champions, GVC. Well, I, you know, uh, I, I've been friends with uh, Muhammad Ali since 68 uh, when I was with the Kingsmen. And uh, we kept hooking up over the years. And in 1985, I was involved on the philanthropic side of, of We Are The World. We Are The World was a really much bigger machine than the public knows. It wasn't just the recording. And um, it, it sort of became contagious. And I told Ali that, hey, one of these days, we're, we're going to feed a billion people. It was just a number we picked, Mia. And in 1993, strangely, in 91, I ended up in the food business. By mistake, I had I had left. I, I had sold my music company and went into sports management and sold that and ended up in food and called Ali and said, Muhammad, guess what? I want you to be my spokesperson and we're going to feed a billion meals in the next 20 years. 1993. So we're sort of under the gun. It's amazing. It, it ended up being kind of a prophecy that you had because you're likely going to break a billion, right? Oh, yes. We'll definitely break the billion for sure. And how is Muhammad Ali doing now? Muhammad, Muhammad, you know, he has good days and bad days. Mia. He's uh, on good days, he's super. And bad days, you have to understand that, that he's had Parkinson's syndrome since 1981. There's no way in the world anybody else could be alive this long, forget about being able to function. You know, and until um, two or three years ago, Muhammad still traveled on missions with us in the jungle. Just amazing. I, he's doing fine. You know, you hear rumors that he's, he's passing, and Muhammad's going to hang around. <laughs> he's not going anywhere. That's great. You've worked with a very long list, longer than my arm, of famous celebrity writing music, performing, and as well as you have uh, new members who have joined the fight to knock out world hunger, including Mike Tyson. Tell us who you're working with now. We're working on something really, really different for Global Village. Besides feeding, we, we have successfully negotiated, Mia, with the Bulgarian government, and I have a relationship with them because of the Benghazi Six, who I helped get released from Gaddafi in Libya, which was like my first nomination for Nobel. Uh, we negotiated with the Ministry of Refugees, and what's happened, I'm sure you're aware of the Syrian refugee situation, you know, all over the world. They're just, they're fleeing, and um, there's a tyrant running their country. Right. And Bulgaria... The overflow from Turkey has almost eight or 900,000 refugees living in really terrible conditions. I've been there four or five times, and I'm going back with Evander and probably Mike. I've negotiated with the Bulgarian government, and they've allowed us, if we would support them, to have families released, get them their non-refugee status, get them residency in Bulgaria, which is part of the European Union, which would make them eligible in any country in Europe and um, free them from the camps. So we're going over in August. We've already freed our first two families, and Evander and I and probably Mike are going to go over in August and free about another 30 or 40, maybe 50 more families and give them back their life. That's amazing. You've been involved in politics. I understand that even with the Richard Nixon administration that you composed Welcome Home POWs in order to help raise money for American POW families. Yes, that was, that was I think that was in 73 or 74 when the POWs were coming back. Yeah, that, that, that was an honor. I was surprised. And um, I, I got a call and I thought it was a joke. And in those days, 
if you remember, we didn't have caller ID. So when someone said they're calling, calling from the White House, I went, "Yeah, right." <laughs> and they said, "Are you interested? We have a we have a list of names here, and and because of your philanthropic work, would you like to do a song to raise money for the prisoners of war?" I said, "Sure, I'd love to." Tell us about how you got your start in the music industry. My book comes out early next year. It's it's all in there. I at the at the age of, of fifteen, my my dad passed away at thirty six, and then. Six months later, my five-year-old brother passed away, and I, I started thinking everybody was dying, so I, I ran away from home and um, ended up going to Israel because I had a cousin there that I thought was a heavyweight. He really wasn't, and started singing in a club. And from there, I ended up coming back to the States and starting the Footprints and then the Kingsmen, and that's how I ended up in the music business. I really, I never finished school. I went to eighth grade. was too busy. I, want, I, want, I wanted to be in music, and that's how it started, and it lasted until... Um, I got into the business officially in probably after my jingle career in the in the early eighties. I'd really had enough. It was you know, it was it was a good it was a good twenty eight or thirty year run and I figured I'd get out while I still had a little bit, you know, of, of you know, so many of our athletes and entertainers just stayed too long me and I wanted to go while I I still had something. <laughs> you know, I wasn't copying what I already copied. Right. Well you absolutely have so much to offer the world and have you did share the stage with Jimi Hendrix that was that was probably one of the most exciting things even then because when that happened Mia he was not a superstar yet it was at the Action House in Long Island and and we were we were one of the opening acts I remember it was us and I don't know if you remember Vanilla Fudge um, they, they were a big band in, 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 in those years. So it was Vanilla Fudge and a group called The Rascals and this guy, Jimi Hendrix, that everyone was talking about, but he wasn't a superstar yet. And then we ended up jamming with him. At the end, he just called a bunch of us on stage, and he was great, incredible guitarist, a nice man. We, we, we had met several times after that um, when he became much more famous, but that was really cool. Well, that's a wonderful story and bragging rights uh, and then the rock opera the diary of mr gray that, that was that was my baby that was um that was an incredible incredible product that unfortunately fell into the hands of bad distribution as i'm sure you know in the record business bad distribution no product in the stores when it was on the charts and it's become an incredible cult album now that goes for before, between two, three, four, or five hundred dollars they're, they're very hard to get but that, that was that was my baby we were going to do the broadway show but that was based on the success of, of the sales and distribution just wasn't there. It was a small record company. And, you know, sometimes your best work, I'm sure yours too, sometimes your best work no one ever hears. And you don't get credit for it. Well, I admire you so much because sometimes people are rich and famous and they don't pay it forward and give it back. And you certainly are doing wonderful work to help the whole world. Your meals, um, not only are you focusing in and have for years to knock out world hunger internationally, but also in America as well now, right? Well, we, we have. As a matter of fact, today, Mia, you know, there, in Alberta, Canada, there's been incredibly terrible floods. Um, and and we, just, we just shipped food out there. We're always doing stuff in, 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 in the States and in Canada. Um, it just it, it doesn't get the headlines, and we don't look for the headlines. Um, you know, but we do as much as we can in the States. But now we're, we're focusing on a new project called Christmas in January. What happens is after um, December 31st, everybody's partying. A lot of people are drunk. You know, they're celebrating New Year's Eve, and the homeless shelters and the soup kitchens really suffer the first week of January. Nick Lowry called us. Nick Lowry, the, the famous you know Hall of Fame place kicker, called us last year and said, "Yank, why don't we do something for the St. Vincent de Paul Society?" in Phoenix, where Muhammad lives. You know, Muhammad will come and Alice Cooper and myself, and let's feed 20,000 homeless for that entire week. What we're doing this year is we're making that eight cities. And then the following year, it'll be 16, and the following year, it'll be 32. And we'll make a difference in the United States. You know, it's, it's, really, it's really, really sad, our homeless situation. And what's even sadder, Mia, is there's almost 600,000 children that we know of that go to school without a lunch every day in our country, you know, and, and somebody's got to start doing something about it. Right. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. Friend 
Yang Berry, two-time nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, Knockout World Hunger. Go to Twitter at GoGBC. That's for Global Village Champions. He works with Muhammad Ali and Vander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis. And now take a listen to Mike Tyson. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson, and I'm a Global Village Champion. Me and five-time heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield and legendary champion Muhammad Ali and Yank Barry are embarking on a new career and has knock out world hunger. Join us in this fight and help a lot of people who's worth helping. Um, I just want to say to all, to all of our Global Villagers, it was a great run with Muhammad. Um, Muhammad can't travel anymore. He appointed um, Evander as our international Global Ambassador. And now with this man on board, Andy Vander, hey, we're going to knock out world hunger. We're going to do it. Welcome back from the break, friends. We've been visiting with our wonderful guest, Yank Berry. Yank, we've been talking about GVC. That stands for Global Village Champions. Let's talk about some of the international humanitarian awards that you have received. I understand that you have been made honorary chief of police. Tell us about that experience. Oh, that was great. That was, that was in that was in Mexico. I, um, I was with Ali, and they asked me, "Would you like to be the honorary chief of police?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really it, it just happened, and. Um, I, I, was, I was honorary chief of police, and my deputy was Muhammad Ali, <laughs> which was really cool. <laughs> that is amazing. And then the 2005 Red Cross Humanitarian Award. That, that was that was great work that we were doing um, in, in the Caribbean with with hurricanes, and that that was a really nice award. Ali and I shared that one. We shared that one together. The prime minister gave that to us. And in 2008, in India, you received the Humanitarian Service Award. Tell us about that experience. Um, we, we, I got involved with, um, there were a lot of flash floods in India, and um, New Delhi was, was literally underwater. And I went in there for um, about three and a half or four weeks, and Gary U.S. Bonds, remember the singer Gary U.S. Bonds? Gary flew over, and I think Benny King, and our champions have been great. You know, some of the champions that have been there from day one, have been super, and, and um, we probably had four or five of them that came every week to India, bringing more supplies and, and helping them out there. And uh, surprisingly, before I left, um, I was asked to come to a black tie affair. I didn't even have a tuxedo. Okay. I had to rent a tuxedo, and um, I, I received that award in, in, I believe it was in, in Mumbai. And in 2007, the Libyan Peace Award, tell us what, what your work involved with that. Uh, that was... That was really in 2006. Me, I, I was in I was in Libya. I had met Gaddafi, obviously with Mohammed, and um, I, I don't think I don't think the world realizes that Muhammad Ali is not the not only the most loved and recognized athlete in the world. He's probably the most recognized person in the world, and especially when you get into the Muslim world. And I was there with Ali. And I was reading in the English paper, they had one English paper in, in, in um, Tripoli, that they had convicted these five nurses, these five Christian nurses from Bulgaria, and, and a Palestinian doctor to death for spreading AIDS. And, and you don't have to be a scientist, rocket scientist to realize you can't just spread AIDS. And these were volunteer nurses and doctors. Why would they do that? So I went to see Gaddafi, and they said, oh, no, he won't see you. And he saw me because... I had the key. I had a I had a pair of signed Muhammad Ali gloves for him. Wow! <laughs> it always it's always <laughs> always the door opener, and um, I went from 2006 until 2007. The last time I met with him was with Mrs. Sarkozy, who at the time was the first lady of France, and um, the press were around, and I had him in a position where I thought I could get away with just pushing it a little further, and I and he'd like to be called leader, and I said leader. I'm a Canadian Jew begging for the life of five Christian nurses and a Palestinian doctor. These people did not spread AIDS. You've got to do the right thing. And he said, I don't know if I, don't know if I was the main reason. I was maybe a small reason. And they gave me the Libyan Peace Award. That's amazing. You received the 2000 Founders Award presented by Dr. Ben Joseph. Tell us about that. The Founders Award. Well, you know, Mia, I, I, don't, I don't even remember. It was, 
I think I got that in Mexico. I'm not sure. Either in Mexico or, or it might have been somewhere in Texas. And the 1999 Honorary I, I Georgian Citizen Award? That, that, was, that was really nice. I, I had received the, um, the Li- Liberian Humanitarian Award from, from President Charles Taylor, and it was at the Fern Bank Museum in, um, in, in Atlanta. And um, when they gave me the award, I was surprised by the Secretary of State and Mayor Campbell with the, um, with the Honorary Georgian Award, and um, I think they gave me another award, the Phoenix Award, I think, in, in, um, in Georgia. As far as so now I'm an honorary Georgian citizen. Well, that's amazing. That's a claim to fame. Yeah, it was fun. Feather in your cap. As far as the the food that you're feeding, how are you distributing that? What kind of meals? Um, what can you do long term to help sustain that process? Well, you know, I, I I'm chairman of a company called VitaPro, and VitaPro is a textured vegetable protein. And the reason why it's the main staple we feed around the world, Mia, is because it's got tremendous shelf life. It reconstitutes five to one meat for the food you send one, and then with water it reconstitutes and it, it tastes like meat and chicken. Um, it's good for any diet. Um, it's halal. It's kosher. So it doesn't matter what religion, where we're going in the world, we know it works. And the ba- and the base, the root product is either um, rice or, or or root vegetable from that region. And that's what we feed them. And it's very easy to digest. It's, it's been used by almost every major NGO around the world. And that's what we feed them with. Do you feel that there is a, a risk in your travels involved in your work? Oh, we, we, we dodged the bullet four or five times. As a matter of fact, when we went to the Ivory Coast, um, Ali and I, and Muhammad's not afraid of anything. <laughs> um, Ali and I, were we literally were in the middle of a civil war, you know, and, and, and they told us, you know, you're going to San Pedro. Um, you got to understand, we're giving you troops to, to escort you, but you guys could get killed. And Muhammad went, oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we went. <laughs> and my wife and I are in Mumbai, um, again, on another feeding in India. And if you, if you remember, I think it was around four years ago, I mean, uh, was it four or five years ago, where some terrorists had attacked the Taj Hotel and they, they blew it up and um, they started killing people. We left an hour before that happened. So God's been good to us. We were in Lebanon, and Israel attacked three hours after we... So I, I think, I always say either God's watching or it's Muhammad Ali. <laughs> it's one of the two. Have you met the Dalai Lama? Yes. Yes, I met him around um, seven or eight years ago. Tell us about him. What was your experience like? Oh, it, it's super calm, um, tremendous like Ali, an aura, an aura that, that, that the presence is there. Very, very, very intense. And uh, it was a really, really nice experience. It was a really nice experience. How about Mother Teresa? Met her around a year before she passed away. Um, and and one, of the, one of the nuns who we've worked so closely with since 1993 is Sister Sponza Beltran, who's become the new Mother Teresa. I don't know if she gets as much as much publicity, but she's from Conyers, Georgia, and now she's 91, but when we were there, she was in her late 70s and almost all blind and took care of five or 600 amputee refugee children and just did it single-handedly, no help from the Vatican. Um, I had met Mother Teresa just about six months before I met her. That's amazing. We have to take a quick break, friends. We'll be right back more with our wonderful guest, Yank Berry. Friend Yank Berry, two-time nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, knock out world hunger. Go to Twitter at GoGBC. That's for Global Village Champions. He works with Muhammad Ali and Vander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, and now take a listen to Mike Tyson. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson, and I'm a Global Village Champion. Me and five-time heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield and legendary champion Muhammad Ali and Yank Barry are embarking on a new career and has knock out world hunger. Join us in this fight and help a lot of people who's worth helping. Um, I just want to say to all, to all of our Global Villagers, it was a great run with Muhammad. Um, Muhammad can't travel anymore. He appointed um, Evander as 
our international goodwill ambassador. And now with this man on board, Andy Vander, hey, we're going to knock out world hunger. We're going to do it. Welcome back from the break, friends. My guest today has been Yank Berry. He is a legend in the music industry, as well has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize twice. He has literally risked his life in order to help people. He's trying to help feed the world, and he's coming up on being very successful. Over one billion meals served is what he's about to break. He deserves our respect. You can find him at Global Village Champions. That's gogvcwwwgovc.com, as well as follow him on Twitter at Yankberry and at GoGVC. He intends to take further trips, and he has enlisted the help of Evander Holyfield and heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. He is such a wonderful peacemaker, he has even brought them together. I encourage you to listen to the next show. That will be part two with Yank Berry to find out what you can do to help knock out world hunger, make the world a better place. No child ever deserves to die of starvation. Please join us again. Thank you so much, friends, for tuning in. Until next time, be safe, be proud. I became an attorney to help people with law and justice on your side. After seeing evil things happen to good people, I did want more. I studied world religion at Harvard in order to spread the spirit of love, help the whole world. We all deserve food, protection, and a happy life. Welcome to the Mia Westbrook Show. Welcome to the show, friends. Thanks for joining us. We have a great show for you today. My guest is a legend in the music industry. He has also been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, not one time, but twice. I'm so honored to have him as a guest. Welcome to the show, Yank Berry. Hey, Mia. How are you doing? It's great to have you on. You did discuss being nominated for the first uh, Nobel Peace Prize. What about the second? Tell us about that. One of the nominations came from one of our very famous champions, the boxer Manny Pacquiao. Now, as a boxer, he obviously wouldn't be able to nominate me, but he's also known as Congressman Emmanuel Pacquiao. <laughs> he's he's with the with the the party that's in power now in the Philippines, and Governor Chabot Singsong, who's the head of the Governors Association, and I, I think there were four or five other. You know, you never really know. How, uh, who nominates you, me, unless they announce it. Um, it's become very fashionable in the last six, seven years for people to announce it. But other than that, out of the I think there were 237 nominations this year. You really don't know how many you had. But um, they, they announced it, and the reason why was I, I've been back and forth to the Philippines many times, and the, there, was, there were terrible, terrible, terrible floods and tornadoes, and they were called the Pablo victims. It was in the uh, San Petramo Valley um, in, in the Philippines, and there were around 9 million displaced people, and we were literally there in the mud uh, working with them. Um, Evander was there, um, and a lot of our, we have a lot of global village champions that are from different countries around the world that a lot of us here in America would not know who they, who they are, but in their countries they're superstars. And the, the amount of champions that came forward from the Philippines and Asia was just sensational. And um, Manny made his announcement that uh, he, he had told me, he said, I want to let you know I had just nominated you for the Nobel again, and so did Governor Chabot Singsong and several other members of Parliament. And um, it's a nice feeling. You know, it, it's, it's not why I'm doing this. 
I, I really would rather that it would be Muhammad that would get nominated, but uh, it feels good. I heard that you went to Italy to accept for Muhammad Ali. Tell us what that was about. We, we were invited by the um, by the Vatican. Uh, they they were giving Muhammad um, a lifetime achievement award. They asked and Muhammad was not capable of, of, of at that point last year of going to Italy. And Lonnie, his wife, asked me if I would go and accept it on behalf of Muhammad. So I did, and it's a great experience in the Vatican. Absolutely, I I was there in 1998 when I. I was accepted into an international program to study law, and it was so beautiful and moving. Oh, it, it, it was great. And, you know, I, I, think, I think the coolest part is we were with um, eight or nine cardinals. They gave us a private tour of the Sistine Chapel. It was only like three or four of us, my wife and I and two other people, and um, a senator, I forget what senator from the U.S., and um, the acoustics were great. Here, here we are in the Sistine Chapel, and then the um, the... Interim, I think I think he was called the interim pope, the one who was in charge of the shop while they were picking a new pope. He walked in. He was the one who gave me the award the um, that previous day. And I said, can I just sing like a verse of Louis Louis just because his acoustics <laughs> look so great? So it was really, really cool. I wish we had a video camera, Mia, because there I, there I was with seven or eight cardinals and the interim pope doing a verse of Louis Louis with them clapping. <laughs> it, was, it was very cool. <laughs> that is amazing. I, I didn't get to have a private tour of the Sistine Chapel, but I did have good luck with, um, you know, how in the museum toward the back left, the second Michelangelo's Pieta after the the first one original of the original Michelangelo uh, was bombed oh, in the wonderful. 70s. And uh, so I had a very thrilling experience where, the uh, superintendent of the museum asked uh, that he said, would you, would you like to take pictures? And there were signs up reading, don't take any pictures. And I certainly didn't want to go to jail. <laughs> right. But for some reason, he, he uh, allowed me graciously to go up to the Pieta and touch it and take a picture with it. So that was a thrill. Wow, you, you got closer than I did to that. Yeah, was... They didn't let me take any pictures. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm filing a complaint. I think he he liked American girls, so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but it's it's truly a wonderful experience. It's, it, um, it is. It's a different world when you when you go through there and you realize you realize that those walls could only talk. Absolutely. Well, tell us about Martin Luther King Jr. Did you meet him? No, no. I I I met Coretta King. Oh, I see. Um, as a matter of fact, Coretta, and I, I did I did I took a delegation to Japan in 1995 or 94 and it was it was Andrew Young as you know was the first African American mayor of of Atlanta and former US ambassador to the UN and co-chair of our Olympic games in 1996 in Atlanta um, took took him his brother Dr. Walter Young who was the council general to Liberia who we were helping at the time Coretta King Muhammad Ali Gary US Bonds was there Muhammad obviously and that was a wonderful trip, and, and Coretta told us some great stories about, about Dr. King, and it, it was great hearing it from her. We also had A.C. Taylor Morton with us. A lot of people don't remember who she was, but if they look at their money from the years that Jimmy Carter was president, she was the first African-American treasurer, woman treasurer of the United States, and she was our third Global Village champion. So it was great. Spending that whole trip with them was really wonderful. You have some amazing stories. Have you met Nelson Mandela? Yes, yes, yes. Met, met, met him twice. Uh, once with Muhammad and, and once on my own. And um, it's really sad, but he, look, he, he's, he's 94. He's had a great life. Mm -hmm. He made a huge difference in democracy and, and South Africa. And he, he, he was wonderful meeting. He, he was one of the magical people that I met. I was at a Dallas Cowboys football game, and I uh, didn't know this because I would have ran next door, um, but he was in a skybox next door, and then uh, they announced showing him on the screen that he was attending a Dallas Cowboys football game. That was pretty neat. Yeah, I think he was in Jerry Jones' box, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he sure was. How can people help? What would you say to our listeners? I can tell you that you can go to GoGVC, and it's www.gvc.com to become a villager yourself. 
What would you most like our listeners to know about GVC? Well, where, where GVC has been incredibly unique, Mia, is is until last year we didn't even have a bank account. Um, for for 18 years, everything has come from me and from some of the Global Village champions. We we have not accepted donations, and one of the reasons was nobody could tell us who to feed, why to feed, what color, what religion, what race, um, and. When Muhammad's health started failing and he wasn't available for the big trips any longer, um, we sat down and had a talk a year ago and realized that almost a billion mills, Mia, sounds like an incredible number. It is, it is a great number, but it doesn't make that much of a difference when you amortize that over 19 years. And we realized that since we charge zero administration, and unlike most of the charities today, which is, as you know, Mia, is a business, it's not a business for us. There is no admin. Um, everybody who works for any of my companies and our champions, it's strictly pro bono. The lawyers work pro bono. The accountants work pro bono. So we realize that to raise the benchmark and really truly make a difference, because I believe that if anyone could end world hunger, Global Village Champions Foundation could, could be the leader, the Johnny Apple seat of it, because we've been doing it. And it's really nice to know that if you donate a dollar, a dollar is going to the end user, and it's happening very quickly. You see it real time on our site. So we're we're asking the public. We, we don't we don't do fundraising drives. We don't have fundraisers, uh, but we're asking the public now. Hey, if you really want to make a difference, if you want to help as a volunteer, become a villager that way. If you want to donate something, become a villager. Um, we'll do things in your own community. And, and another thing uniquely that we're doing, Mia, is whatever comes in goes back into that community. And, and that's what we're planning on doing going forward now. And we're, and we're hoping that, that the dollars come in so we can, instead of $1 billion, we could say $4 billion, $5 billion, or ultimately in the next four or five years really have a day without hunger where simultaneously in a period of 30 days we feed the, we feed the needy of the world. And if we can accomplish that, then we get guys like Bill Gates and Michael Dell and, and Warren Buffett and the sheikhs in Saudi Arabia to say, hey, guys, buy a day. Right. You know, it, it's good karma. It'll make you feel good. Absolutely. And that website, again, is www.gogvc.com. You can also follow Yank Berry on Twitter at Yank Berry. That's Y-A-N-K-B-A-R-R-Y, as well as GoGVC on Twitter as well. We have to take a quick break, friends. We'll be right back. More with our wonderful guest, Yank Berry. Stay tuned. Friend Yank Berry, two-time nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, Knockout World Hunger. Go to Twitter at GoGVC. That's for Global Village Champions. He works with Muhammad Ali and Vander Holyfield. Lenny Hi, I'm Mike Tyson, and I'm a Global Village Champion. Me and five-time heavyweight champion of Vander Holyfield and legendary champion Muhammad Ali and Yank Barry are embarking on a new career and to knock out world hunger. Join us in this fight and help a lot of people who's worth helping. Um, I just want to say to all, to all of our global villagers, it was a great run with Mohammed. Um, Mohammed can't travel anymore. He appointed um, Evander as our international global ambassador. And now with this man on board and Evander, hey, we're going to knock out world hunger. We're going to do it. Welcome back from the break, friends. We've been visiting with a wonderful man, Yank Barry. We were talking about, prior to the break, about knocking out world hunger. Friends, you can follow Yank Barry on Twitter at Yank Barry and also Global Village Champions GVC. You can become a villager and help fight to knock out world hunger like Evander Holyfield, Muhammad Ali, Yank Barry. Yank, tell us who else is working right now in order, what famous celebrities including Evander Holyfield, are fighting to knock out world hunger. Well, you know, ce ce 
Celine Dion's been a champion for many, many years, and John Boyd and Steven Seagal. Steven's got a pretty good punch. <laughs> um, we've, had, we've had some great champions. But something really exciting has happened recently, Mia. Um, we were talking about it before the break. So the two arch enemies in, in the ring are Holyfield and Tyson. You know, the, the second fight did not end very pretty with Mike biting his ear twice. <laughs> and what I, found out, what I found out a few months ago, I was talking with Evander, and I said, so what's Mike like? And he went, I don't know. And then I ended up talking to Mike. I said, Mike, do you have any idea what Evander's like? And he said, no. And it's amazing to think that here, here are two guys that, that really were, were, the, were the one and two of the sport for probably four or five years. And, and, and singly, they were, they were head of their sports for almost 15 or 16 years. And they didn't know each other. We got together in Atlanta around, I think it was six or seven weeks ago. Was that six or seven weeks ago, Chase? Yeah, or maybe eight weeks ago. And um, we did a shoot for um, Fox Sports. And there was a segment um, where, where Evander and Mike would talk to each other. And I had an idea. I said, guys, before we do the shoot, before the cameras come in, why don't you hang for a few hours and get to know each other? And the irony of it all is, A, they liked each other, <laughs> and B, they, they both decided that, hey, let's, let's join Yank and let's knock a world hunger together. To, as big as Mike is on, on his own, Mia, and as big as Evander is on his own, they're so much bigger when they walk in together. You know, all around the world, they're very recognizable faces. And um, it's really a joy knowing that, that we're going to... Um, we're going to refugee camps. We're going to we're going to release hostages and refugees. I got Mike and Evander there who can still throw a pretty good punch. <laughs> well, you <laughs> are a peacemaker, aren't you? Try to be. <laughs> I'm making up for all my rock and roll sins. You know, it's funny, Mia. The the Lou Louis piece you're playing. Like everyone always asks me if I was the original lead singer. I was not the original lead singer of the Kingsmen. The original lead singer was Jack Eli who ironically was drafted to Vietnam and never toured with the band and never recorded any other songs. But the, the piece you're playing is the one I did in Phoenix at Fight Night with David Foster and Alice Cooper because I hear, uh, let's go, and I hear David on the keyboard. So that's, the, that's one of the ones that I did. <laughs> I love that uh, it piece. It's all on YouTube for the listeners. You, If you Google YouTube uh, Fight Night, you'll see Yank Berry sharing the stage with Alice Cooper uh, David Foster. It looked like Jerry Colangelo was up there. Jerry Colangelo. You know who else was up there? A lot of people don't realize it. Kurt Schilling, who had just won the Cy Young Award, uh-huh. pitcher, and 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 Gonzo, who was who won the the the, the batting championship. Yeah, it, it, it was really cool background singers. <laughs> and Jennifer Lopez uh, was at Fight Night this year too, as well. Yeah, yeah. This year I did. This year I did it with um, did it with uh, Achy Breaky Heart. I just forgot his name. Uh, Billy Ray um, Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh-huh. It was Billy Ray and 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 um, and a, a, um, Tom Hanks' wife. Right, right. Rita Wilson. She was there, and and um, who's the country artist? That no, uh, Keith Harkin was there, but the country artist, the woman that, yeah, Reba McIntyre. Oh, Reba. I went. Yeah. I went semi brain. Yeah, I went semi brain dead there. Yeah, it was Reba. It was a great fight that day. Andre Bocelli was there this year. Oh, that's great. It was really great. I, I, I was one of the founders of, of Fight Night. You know, it, it's for it's for the Ali Parkinson Center in, in, in Scottsdale. Right. And um, it's been 19 years. Next year's our 20th anniversary. And I think we've raised almost $100 million. That's you know, which wonderful. Is, which is pretty cool for a one-night event. You've met so many celebrities that I'm sure everyone will forgive you for not remembering the name because you have had such a wonderful career. I had an embarrassing moment where I was in the airport and it was Lyle Lovett sitting there and he had a big black hat on and so you know he's kind of right. known he's kind of known for his hairdo no one recognized him and i am bad with names but i never forget a face and so i was walking quickly to catch my plane and i looked over and i said are you Dwight Yoakam and he said yeah <laughs> i am so i walked up and <laughs> i took a picture with him and he was laughing, and then I got to my, my gate, and I looked at the picture, and I thought, that's not Dwight Yoakam. That's the guy who was married to Julia, Lu- Julia Roberts. And I thought, oh, my God, how embarrassing. I have to go back and apologize. <laughs> did, did you? 
I did. I went back and apologized. And, oh wow! And, uh, he, he he must he must have got a chuckle out of that. I'm sure he did. So that that was funny. I play in a lot of celebrity pro ams, and you know, in golf tournaments, and and I, I play with Gary U.S. Bonds, and, and the same thing happens with Gary. <laughs> um, he'd be walking in, and, and as people would ask him for his autograph, they'd go, Mr. Mathis, can we have your autograph? <laughs> he signs Johnny Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. Tell us about your work with Haiti and what happened after the disaster earthquake. I, I, I was at my, my home in the Bahamas when, when it happened, and, and, and NASA is only about 35 minutes from Haiti. And no planes were allowed in. Like the country was closed, and I, I just I just took a chance. I, I got a DC three, which is which carries a big payload, uh, chartered it, and we flew in. The airport was the, the landing strips were almost not landable. We got in. Um, the UN didn't want to let us in. We literally walked past the UN. We had we had I think twenty thousand bottles of water because they needed water very badly and medical supplies. And we kept flying back. We kept doing shuttles every day for, for almost two weeks. Um, and then Sean Penn came in and has done a, he's still, he's still there. He's done, done a wonderful job there. And it's really, really sad. It's the, I've been, all, I've been in probably 75 to 100 situations around the world. And I've never seen devastation, including, including the tsunami um, in Indonesia. I've never seen devastation like I've seen in Haiti. It, it's hard to explain you to people. When when someone has less than nothing, and and that's right. and that's what and, and it hasn't changed much. Port-au-Prince will never be rebuilt. It's really sad. They have a terrible karma. They get hit with every single hurricane. What happened is they've cut down all their trees. They've killed the whole ecosystem because that you know they the, the wood chips is how they how they they cook their food and how they stay warm. Mm -hmm. And and there's just there's no trees left. So every time there's a hurricane, there's mudslides, and it's just continuously a disaster and it's really it's one of the countries we try to maintain a relationship with and keep shipping food to but it's an endless pit it just it just it's never going to get better yeah well that's why i highly commend you for your work again followers you can follow yank berry on twitter at yank berry and his website for global village champions is www.gvc.com. You can also follow GVC at GoGVC on Twitter. And I want to thank my wonderful guest, Yank Berry, for being a guest on the show and all that you do. Thank you so much for having me here. This was a pleasure. Take care. Bless you. Thank you. You too. Yank Berry, what a truly incredible human being. He said, quote, God is not going to judge you by how much money you have. He's going to judge you on how you help people. He's a world-renowned philanthropist and humanitarian. Champion Celine Dion said about Yank Berry, quote, Everyone should take Yank as an example. And his friend Muhammad Ali said about Yank, I am honored to call him my friend. Yank Berry has been an angel to the world. In Haiti, the Divine Mercy Orphanage, he adopted all 48 children that lived there. This is a man with a loving and kind heart who knows no boundaries and does not stop to take no for an answer. He feeds the world, coming up on providing almost one billion meals to people in need. And he says that's not enough. His beautiful wife supports him when asked about his numerous humanitarian awards and the distribution of almost one billion meals. He humbly said, I got by with a little help from my friends, the Beatles song. And he said with a smile on his face, and I quote, If my legacy at the end of the day is that I made a positive difference in people's lives, I will be very happy. It has been an honor to have Yank Berry as a guest on the show. Again, you can become a villager and fight to knock out world hunger and help people. This is a wonderful charity. Some charities are a business, and people are reluctant to contribute and donate. GVC, WWW, Global Village Champions, is a fine, remarkable charity. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Until next time, be safe, be proud, and let's work together to bless and heal the world. <laughs>